K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back. Top off your mimosa and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. I my dues to make it. Everybody and a very good, easy Sunday morning, January 10th, 2016, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. J.D. and Stacy here on Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. Your cure for that mainstream media hangover on that K98 talk. Everybody right now within the sound of my very, very morning voice, get over to K98talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Say hello to the early mornings, drinking his smartest political radio audience in the business, welcome back to all our political freaks, geeks, and back alley sneaks. There's only one way to start a Sunday, baby. I've already had 47 cups of coffee. I need something to help wake me up. You know what I'm saying, baby? Oh, I am I pretty much have been drinking about three pots of coffee already. How many pots have you smoked? <laughs> None. <laughs> well, for those of you who were paying attention last night, the NFL went full WWE, baby. It was a sight to behold and a real disgrace. This morning, though, Stacy and I are going to be bringing you Bubba might have grabbed one ass too many. Benghazi Hero's father is ignored to protect Obama's legacy. What else? What else? What else? What else? A porn story, I guarantee, I promise, and much, much more. Remember, guys, we're not just here live Sunday mornings on 11 a.m., for that Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets on K98 Talk, Stacey and I do it again live Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Thursday as well for Game On. Friday.
Friday night with 5 p.m. WNWN, WN, JC. We lead it to Yahoo Sports in that Philadelphia, Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware. Thursday night is a special four-hour block of radio because the boss is going to kill me. So we got Lou Bell in that Bell River for whom the bell tolls before J.D. and Stacey at 9 o'clock with Game On. Everybody sticks around for Daniel Stafford and Heads of Freezer Radio. And then 11 p.m., we keep forgetting to give him love because he's coming back and doing some more live shows. The boss, that Ricky Ticky Tavi Rick Robinson, he does the America Off the Rails each weekday night live, Mondays, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then it's just about to be getting to be that time. Everybody start making their arrangements. Get down to CPAC. Come visit Stacy and I over on Radio Row. Get your picture taken with us. Come get drunk. We like Loftus. Flipsideshow.com or Flipside, whatever his thing is. Stacy will tell you. And after the show, kids, not during it. Get over to Spreaker.com. Hashtag JD and Stacy. J D A N D S T A C E Y. Good morning. Good morning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Something interesting like that. morning. Interesting morning at my house. Oh, yeah. Why? Four teenage boys decided to have a uh, camp out in my home last night, and apparently about 8.30 this morning, um, a couple of them were downstairs in the basement watching TV. Another one went down. They decided to try to scare them, so they opened a window and jumped out, mm -hmm. and apparently my uh, neighbor called the police. <laughs> Okay, terrific. <laughs> there were some contrite teenage boys in my home this morning. Contrite? I got to tell you something. You're a better person than I am. The neighbors are calling the cops because the kid's jumping out the window. You know what? It must have been like that house. It was 830 in the morning. <laughs> you must have looked like that house in Ohio that had those girls locked up. Oh, yeah, I think the woman next door has had these kids locked in the house for 10 years and they're hopping out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like sitting there going, I, my neighbor's a dear, sweet man. Mm -hmm. Very elderly, but we call him all by himself the neighborhood watch. Well, you know what it is? You know what it is? It, it, probably at that age, what he's got to do is he, he's only calling the police department as he slowly slips into dementia just to make sure this is actually happening. You know, I mean, you can't have old people staring out the window and be like having people pop out the window at like 8 o'clock in the morning. You can't do that. That upsets no, the no, whole No, no, routine. no, no. If you want to know anything that is going on in this neighborhood, you just mm -hmm. ask him. <laughs> I mean, it, he is he is a one man neighborhood watch. The town crier, pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, it was so ludicrous. I mean, it happened, and I had to laugh. Now, for those of you who were watching the first round of the NFL playoffs yesterday, there were the AFC games, and there's nothing to talk about in the Kansas City game. Kansas City, Kansas City got the ball to begin the game, scored on a kickoff return from 106 yards, and that was basically it. They just hammered the Texans 30 to nothing. Now, let's fast forward to last night's game, an absolutely beautiful life lesson. So you had the Steelers and the Bengals last night. And for those of you who aren't sports fans, the Cincinnati Bengals are basically the New York Jets of the Midwest. Uh, I don't think they've won a playoff game in about 22, 23 years. Bah, 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 bah. But they've been playing phenomenally this year. They've gotten to the playoffs on the arm of a quarterback subbing in for the guy who got them all the way down the season. It is an end-of-the-world storm yesterday. Rain, sleet, you name it, the conditions were awful. The Bengals are down 15 to nothing. One of the best catches in professional football history happened with the Steelers. It's a phenomenal game. They drive in the fourth quarter. They go ahead 16-15, intercept the ball. The Steelers get it back, and it really should have been, uh, and the Bengals get it back, should have been game over. They fumble the ball, and in the last uh, uh, 28 seconds of the game, the two top people on their team completely got selfish, fell apart, took two 15-yard penalties, gave the Steelers the win, and lost the game for them. And then one of the morons went and had a big video rant cursing about everything else was his fault. I just thought it was a great metaphor for... Our Republican candidates. <laughs> I, I really, I really, really do. I really, I really saw that at the end. And with the nonsense I've seen in the last three or four days, whether it was Carly Fiorina or Rand Paul or anybody else who's going to start throwing this Ted Cruz birthday nonsense around. If you want to become the left kids, do me a favor. Go to Columbia Law School. Bye. We know why you listen to us. And we know what you've been waiting for. We're going to be bringing you that weekend update brought to you by that Mr. Eric Williams at barbwiresatire.com, baby. We 
weekend update for that week ending January 12, 2016. During his town hall gun control infomercial on CNN this week, President Obama said it's easier for 12- and 13-year-old kids to get guns than to get books. As the president was searching for his next thought, he caught himself and said, No, wait, I was thinking about abortion. Sorry. Ooh, an abortion joke to open a Sunday. Christ. According to the latest batch of emails released on Friday, Hillary told someone to alter classified markings on classified material. The revelation is a possible smoking gun, and immediately after the news broke, the president signed an executive order regarding smoking gun control. Initial reports of North Korea conducting an H-bomb test are being disputed by the White House. Always one, always ones, oh, oh, Jesus. Always ones to downplay any threat from abroad. Josh Erner said their sources were only finding evidence of the use of F-bombs and glitter bombs. The... The mystery of whether the president cried for real or not has been solved. Unsure that he can make tears on cue, Obama instructed Josh Ernest, hidden behind the podium, podium, to release a mousetrap on the president's left buttock when he got to the line about the Sandy Hook shooting. That is not what Eric Williams wrote. I'm not saying it. Why not? Because I actually read them before we go on. What Eric Williams wrote was no, vagina. Stop, 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 An awkward stop, stop, moment stop, occurred stop, during stop. Obama's teary press ding, conference. Ding, 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 ding. An awkward moment occurred during Obama's teary press conference on gun control when Tom Hanks stood up in the audience and defiantly shouted, Are you crying? There's no crying in grandstanding. A new study shows that Islam could become the second largest religion in America by the year 2050. Coincidentally, the survey also says Islam will be the second largest cause of death to the American public by that same year. In his final STFU, or State of the Union speech, I'm so glad I did. President Obama will leave one seat empty in the room to honor gun victims. The gesture means his presidency has officially jumped the shark. Unofficially, the seat is being left empty to give Michelle more room to manspread. I think it's for Elijah the Angel, and that is your weekend update for that weekend in January 10th, 2016. Brought to you by Mr. Eric Williams at BobWireSatire.com, baby. <laughs> Hold on a second. I got to reset the little radio little man in the boat. Hold on. All right. All reset and back from whatever that was we just read. (laughs) Whatever that was there. (laughs) Okay. What are we (laughs) what are we doing in this segment? This is um, this is basically where the media has completely ignored the father of a fallen war hero. And by the way, by the way. For those of you who have been playing along with your political scorecard before the Schmeckleface Jerkoff got elected in 2008, uh, I'm sure you all well remember a woman by the name of Cindy Sheehan. Now, before I go into her abject lunacy at times, I do want to say that everything that Cindy Sheehan does comes from the heart of a gold star mom. All right. Meaning her son was killed. Uh, I believe he was killed in Iraq, not Afghanistan. But she's alone. And did you just correct Jonah Goldberg? What do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. Go on. What? Nothing. Go. I, well, you said I corrected. What did I correct? I thought you meant that that was what it's that it said um, Afghanistan in the story. No, 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 no. I just couldn't recall from the, from the top of my mind. I knew that she was a gold star oh. mom. But everybody remembers her. And what just passed was the 10-year anniversary of everybody remembers it, her big protest down at Bush's Ranch over the war. And, I mean, they had, they had some quotes in here. Carl Quintanilla, that, 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 that she and say some historians may be evolving as an icon in the war's turning point. And she goes on for three weeks. This is like 1968. Brian Williams making stuff up. Uh, As the 1960s protest song said, there's something happening here. He then said, I also wrote that song, and I am Buffalo Springfield. Um, (laughs) But for those of you who remember her protest, she was not a, a partisan. And you wouldn't know that by watching the coverage of her over the last seven or eight years. She has actually been more vociferous and more vocal about Obama being just as much of a war criminal as she thought George W. Bush was, if not more so. And I want you to think about that the last time you heard about Cindy Sheehan was probably January 20th, 2009, when Obama got elected. So why don't we segue this, in, wait, wait, why don't we segue this into Stacey? Who is Charles Woods, and why don't most people know him as a household name 
as everybody did Cindy Sheehan about 10 years ago. Well, I mean, Charles Woods, and t to some extent, right, um, the entire uh, set of family members who have been vocal about the, the attack in Benghazi do not get as much press, with the exception, I would say, of Fox News. Um, Michael Ingmeyer, whose whose nephew was killed, he's gotten some play on Fox, and, and, talk and, so, radio. Is, and talk so is his mother. Um, you know, but you know, when you take a look at what is going on in the election, one of the the big problems Hillary Clinton has is people don't view her as honest. Shocker. Um, don't or, ever you say, know, approachable don't ever, don't, and don't ever I'm sorry? say don't ever say Hillary Clinton and shocker in the same sentence again. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a definite foul. All right. Um, so one of her, her problems is trustworthiness uh, and also transparency in terms of, you know, being 100% open about what went on. Uh, I think Jonah Goldberg in this does a really good job of talking about the politically convenient truths at the time that the Benghazi attack happened and why um, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were behaving the way they behaved. It's still disgusting and awful and wrong, um, but there's now this this piece in the campaign where people are talking about what Hillary Clinton told the parents and family members of the victims of Benghazi was that she was going to make sure uh, the maker of that infamous video went to jail. She and, is now saying that they're all lying. And this is um, where this is <laughs> this is where our. Our political ruling class has finally, I think, screwed themselves in this moment because, you know, Stacey and I were talking offline, uh, uh, off air last night, and it was, um, you know, it was regarding the segment we have coming up about Bill Clinton and Chelsea, you know, campaigning for grandma uh, as she heads into, into Iowa and New Hampshire. And, you know, one of the points that I made is to a certain extent, I actually have a bit of empathy for Chelsea Clinton because I think that. I, I think that Bill and Hillary Clinton had a child as a political prop. You know, you don't see any more children. You know, you have, you have Hillary ranting and raving and, and sneering and snarling about traditional moms and how they raise families uh, um, and, and, and the whole nine. But where I think they went wrong is they've always looked at the rest of the country, the voters, you, me, everybody else, as the same kind of political props just to be used at their advantage. And I don't know if a lot of people know Tyrone Woods' father, Charles Woods, is a retired lawyer and administrative judge. So, you know, the Clintons are always dancing on the head of a pin about language because they're so much smarter than everybody else with their Yale education and their law degrees. Well, Charles Woods is at least on par with them as far as being able to... to to realize gravity of situations and being a retired lawyer and administrative judge, he took notes after Hillary Clinton met with him saying that she stated to him, we're going to get the, the filmmaker responsible for your son's deaths. In two interviews, one with ABC's George Stephanopoulos and another with a Daily Sun col columnist, Tom McLaughlin, Hillary Clinton has said Charles Woods and Patricia Smith, the mother of Sean Smith, who was also killed in Benghazi, are lying. Are lying. You have but the I mean, wait a second. You have the press calling Republican candidates to account about maybe bringing up things about Bill Clinton, and they're silent as this cankle leg, fat piano leg thief just says that the parents of two American heroes are liars. No, you have the left foaming at the mouth. Because Ben Carson called an inn at um, the military academy a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So the left will dissect language to that point. And here you have a man who has an extemporaneous dated record of what he was told during the entire investigation. Okay. And this woman, who really wouldn't know the truth, excuse my language, if it bit her in the left butt cheek. Mm hmm has the audacity to go on national television and call, I mean, call him a liar. It, 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 would, it would be bad enough if that line about getting the video maker and, you know, making sure they were held to account wasn't all over the national press at the time. But here's, That was uh, widely reported. 
But here, 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 here's what everybody has to understand. The press is not now and has not been, at least for the last 40 or 50 years, interested in reportage. It's all about narrative in this particular case, circling the wagons for the Clintons and protecting Obama's legacy. But it's funny about Stacey mentioning something sneaking up and biting Hillary on that left ass cheek because you know what we got in segment number two? We got Bill President. Bill President. We got Bill Clinton. That's right. Bubba, y'all. Because you know why? Because now I like to bite. Every left ass cheek in the country, except for Hillary. JD and Stacy, K98 Talk, coming right back. One break coming up. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, Mike, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. From the Vikings of Norway to my home down south to Washington, D.C., I've been around. I've seen it all, and I've come out on top. You better beware, for all you know, the bell tolls for you. Enter the bell tower or watch your step. 8 p.m. Thursdays, K98 Talk. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. Welcome back to everybody but Adam Pac-Man Jones, who needs to sit in the corner and think about what he's done. J.D. and Stacey here, curing your mainstream media hangover on Bloody Marys and Broadsheet Sunday morning on that K98 Talk. Remember, guys, we're not just here live. Seven Sunday, at Sundays at 11, 
Tuesday, Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We do it again. And Thursday night, listen, Thursday night is one of the biggest blocks in radio. 8 o'clock, you got Bell River for whom the bell tolls. 9 o'clock, J.D. and Stacy game on, bang. 10 o'clock, Daniel Stafford heads in the freezer radio, baby. And 11 o'clock, every day of the week, five nights a week, the boss does not get enough credit. When you're home and you've had it with the world, at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, baby, you get over to that K98 talk, you listen to that Ricky Tiki Tavi, Rick Robinson, that America off the rails, baby, he be bringing you everything you want to hear. And I'm serious, kids, start making your arrangements, get your ass down to CPAC, March 2nd through the 5th, come see Stacy, myself, and the rest of the K98 talk crew, and oh, and those over at WNJC, I hear it may be uh, what they call a very interesting Radio Row broadcast. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so much to say, so much to see, so much to be seen, baby. <laughs> we call it the conservative Lollapalooza for a reason. That's right. And you check out, listen, don't just check out Stacy and I, 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NJC for that uh, 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 whatever show we do over there. But check out the the whole conservative commandos network over there. I mean, it just there are some phenomenal shows. Uh, you can get the live link up on uh, NJC site. And it's very, 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 very much worth the listen. All right, back to the radio thing. All right, let's see. What did we just do? Uh, oh, we got Bill. Uh, but, you know, I've got to. He tell doesn't you. even sound like him anymore. <laughs> like, you do a great 1998 Bill Clinton, but he doesn't. Uh -uh. He's been ravaged by VD and God knows what else. <laughs> well, heart disease, but still, I mean, like, watching him speak, I'm like, wow. He's hey, old. This goes back to this actually ties back into what we were speaking about in the last segment with these two. And who and, and who exactly who exactly are we talking about? And, and, and this is something for the new listeners. I, I, I don't think you've heard us. You, you, you may have not heard us say. But Bill and Hillary Clinton, baby, they're not just the former president and presidentress or whatever the hell you want to call that woman. OK, they're not forming a governor of Arkansas and what have you. No, they are the emperor and empress of Chappaqua and Hillary Clinton. Mark my words and her campaign are nothing short of. <laughs> now, for some reason. For some reason, if you want to make a Star Wars analogy, instead of taking out the Emperor and just blowing away Bernie Sanders and and um, um, the peanut vendor from Maryland, evidently. I mean, this guy, this O'Malley guy is, is I mean, we used to make fun of Lin Lindsey Graham, but I mean, good God, baby Jesus. Jim Webb is making more noise about running as, as, a, uh, as a Democrat, but them radio gods are going to be given, baby, because the Empress of Chappaqua has decided... To have the emperor of Chappaqua, uh, we're going to come vote for Hillary because, uh, yeah. okay. So everybody remembers Bill, right? Now, Bill, th this is the best analogy that I can make, Stacey. So you know like the Rolling Stones and the, the, the bands today, you know, the guys, the Octogen, the guys who are in their 70s who are still touring. Mm -hmm. That have been rock stars for 40, 50, maybe even going on 60 years at this point. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. The tour the Rolling Stones took in 1974 took place in a lot different world than the one they took, say, in 1996 or 2010. Okay? You went from decadence, debauchery, and literally living like the Sultan of Brunei and orgies and the whole nine to a world where it's safe sex. You got, you got, you got uh, diseases that kill you. And this well, and now safe spaces. Well, hold on a second. This, to my mind, is where we enter Bill Clinton. Because Bill is the aging rock star that did it all and was on top of the charts and the world when the world was a completely different place. I saw a picture of him just recently behind the blonde with big cans with his hands on his shoulders. They have gotten too smart by half. In the last segment, we spoke about the media circling the wagons and the double standard. That has created such a bubble for these people that I do not think that they realize that Bill Clinton has just as much ability to turn away, especially the millennial base that she's banking on, as to bring it in. I, you know, I don't know. When you look at the polling on him, you know, 
polling post presidency as, as little as a couple of years ago was at 69% approval rate. I think it's still in the high 50s, which beats hers. Okay. He is far more likable than she is. And I, I hearken back to a conversation we had with uh, Michael Loftus when he was on about Bill Clinton. And, you know, we could probably all sit down at the bar and have a beer with Bill Clinton and trade stories and have a few laughs, right? It would be Hillary coming in the room and telling us, you know, get out, get out. Um, you know, I, I think he still has some charisma. Um, and that's not in the dirty sense. I, I think it's in the, the public speaking sense and being able to relate to people in a way that his wife cannot. People do not like her. Generally, Bill Clinton is viewed as likable. No, but I, I, you, you, you're completely misunderstanding what I'm saying. The polling that you are talking about and the opinions of Bill Clinton that you are mm-hmm. speaking about to a very large mm-hmm. swath of Democratic voters, say, under the age of 30 or 35, they know not about. Because the, 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 the opinions that they hold of Bubba and of the Clintons have been the legacy, completely redacted, storybook fiction version that you hear through the mainstream media since these people have left public life. Well, there are the, a lot the fairy of, tale version lot, is listen, not going to change. No, no, no. But when that fairy tale version was constructed, the, 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 the voters that we are talking about that are most likely to be affected by Republicans effectively using Bill Clinton being just an awful human being against Hillary are people who are too young who have lived through the Clinton era in the first place, which means the only thing that they have heard up to this point is the fairy tale version. You know what they have now that voters their age didn't have while this was going on? They got them interwebs, baby. They got them Twitters. They got them Instagrams. They got everything. Okay. They got, they well, got access let's to the ch- world's information at their fingertips. Now, hold on a second. You are also talking about the same generation and demographic who honestly believes that sexual assault on college campuses are a bigger existential threat than ISIS. Okay. So let's look at who else we're pushing out on the stage as a herring for millennials and young women who is about one of the lousiest human beings in the entire universe, Lena Dunham. They flock to her like flies in the same age group. Here is a woman who made a false rape allegation, admits to molesting her sister, okay, and is about as pro-abortion as you can get. I mean, I honestly think she would sign up for, you know, killing babies within the first five minutes they're born. So when you're looking at people who have a certain star quality, which a former president has, and you can overlook all of the ick around Lena Dunham, which that demographic does, I don't think it'll hurt them at they all. No, they don't overlook the ick. You, 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 you are so... They do! You no, know, you're conflating apples and oranges, okay? Lena Dunham is on a television show, okay? She is an actress. She is a celebrity. This culture from the beginning of actresses and celebrity have always excused that. Half of the people that watch Lena Dunham and Girls don't even know about that nonsense. Those are people who aren't going to show up and vote anyway. And you don't think they forgive it? You don't think they forgive it in political officials? We've talked about this for ages. The standard on the side of the Democrats is completely different. No, I, I think— You I, have I, Democrats that have, been, that have been accused and even convicted of things no. that would sink a Republican in 30 seconds or less. Absolutely, but I, you have to understand. You are, you are so myopic about this. You're so in a vacuum about this. You, you, uh-uh. you, you, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because if you take a look at the polling and the nonsense and the crowds, okay, Bernie Sanders has a very, 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 very sneaky appeal. All right, and he is the college a dirty campus, old man too. He, he, a college campus appeal, and I am telling you, this is going to backfire. Bringing out Bill because these people are so wrapped up in what they think and who they think that they are. They are completely unself-aware about the fact of, of the baggage that this guy brings. Let me ask you another question. They have held him so under wraps. You know for damn sure, you know for damn sure that the plan with him was not have to have to bring him out at all, at all, unless it was in the general, if she needed him, 
and now against Bernie Sanders? I guess, uh, 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 Mr. Vargas, Mr. Vargas, the color people are yelling, oh, you in charge here, you in charge here. And, and what, what, do we even have a name for O'Malley? He's such a nothing that they got to shoot their wad on this now? Before Iowa and New Hampshire, that tells me that they, they are, they are pet- petrified, 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 petrified of what they're seeing internally. And I do not see him being an asset for her. I just don't. Because I, I don't you- see him necessarily being a huge asset, but I don't see him being a huge liability either. I'm sorry. The oh, Democratic base is the most forgiving I do. I, 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 in the I, country. No, I, I just don't. I don't believe it. she's not doing well with millennials and young women the, anyway. I don't pri- think this is going to make it any worse. I this really is don't. not about the primary. This is go- having him out now is going to hurt her in the general. Not the primary. The general is what's going to hurt her having him out there. Because I, I want you to I want you to think about the razor's edge that the Clinton campaign finds itself on. And to Stacey's point, this is the best part about the double standard of the media, because you never hear about this. To my mind, the Clinton campaign has made a strategic and tactical decision to put Bill, his foibles, his problems now remember something. They also knew good and damn well that by putting him up front. One of the things that was definitely going to reopen back up that had been quiet for a while was the Clinton Foundation donations. Their decision is that the Clinton Foundation, foreign donations, money they haven't given back, stuff they haven't disclosed, all of his past bimbo eruptions, as their war room used to call it, and then go back to what's going to be start to be discussed is the, the Lincoln bedroom for sale and Charlie Tree and the teas that would pay for at the White House. And the Clinton campaign's strategic and tactical decision is that that is a better story to have out front right now than the problems she is having. Whether it's with this email investigation or this rumor of indictment that keeps flying around, that is not a power position to be in. She is attached to the Lincoln bedroom, to the Lewinsky scandal, to everything you named as much as he is because she was such a visible and forceful presence in his administration. It didn't hurt her. Why do you think having him out there is going to, is going to make it any worse? I really don't, I don't see it. Because she wasn't attached. She was attached to it, but she wasn't. You have to understand something. Of course she was. Why was, why why was Hillary Clinton? The Clinton foundation, the Clinton foundation all came out before she ever announced and continues to come out now. And it still doesn't hurt her. Why, why, why was she elected Senator of New York state? What was the coronation? No. Why was she elected Senator of New York state? It it was, it's a very simple answer because what she did was crafted her image as somebody who was outside of Bill, his problems, and his presidency. So you can't have it both ways. She burst onto the political scene as the scorned woman. For all this power nonsense, and I don't want to be a career woman, and mommy's in there baking cookies like everybody else. It's crap. It's crap. This woman came onto the political scene by wrapping herself in the cloak of being a victim. A victim of the same sexual serial assaulter that sat in the White House for eight years during the 90s going into 2000. But I think it's going to be interesting. We're definitely, we're definitely going to see how he plays out in the general. I think he's a, I, I guess I think he's a more of a liability than you do. Uh, before we go into break, though, before we go into break, though, did you hear, did you hear the very interesting breaking news uh, on the Democratic side? No. Really? Really? I'll give you a hint. Oh, what is she doing now? Oh, no, it ain't her. No, it's her, but she ain't doing it. All right, let's we'll, we'll play this one more time. It's a quiz to the audience. Play in the chat room. What do you get when you combine... And... Boom, boom, boom. Oh, did she endorse him? No, it gets better. Uncle Speedo is considering her for his veep. Considering her Oh, my her God. For Kill me now. Veep. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. This woman is not dead. But what I find very interesting, 
Guys, keep your eyes. You know, the Republican primary is going to play out how it's going to play out. Keep your eyes on Iowa and more specifically New Hampshire in that Democratic primary, baby, because, because Uncle Speedo, everybody's favorite Uncle Speedo. Boom, boom, boom. He's sneaky good, and there's, a, and there's a lot of Democratic gun owners in New Hampshire with Uncle Bernie being next door in Vermont that is not that crazy about Hillary Clinton saying she's going to be stealing everybody's guns, are they, baby? No, no. Those are live free and die kind of state or die kind of state. So uh, how about this? How about all oh, Bernie and Hillary supporters die and everybody else? Why don't you feel free to live on free? Coming back in the last segment, coming up into the top of the 12 o'clock hour, which you have to stick around for because you're going to have that Lou, that Bell River, that Dr. Randy Arrington on that office hours. We got virtual reality porn, a bunch of other stuff, and then we get to end the week. J.D. and Stacy K98 Talk coming back here on Bloody Mary's and Broad Street. Everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in... Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. I mean, can, I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way. To endure it all but we do understand that it's our turn our duty to keep them secure for the rest of their lives wounded warrior project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently at no cost for life so that they might stand at ease join us at findwwp.org k98 talk is expanding its lineup for 2015 this means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Welcome back, J.D. and Stacy, Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets here on our K98 Talk. Everybody who's not in there right now, get over to whatever device you want. Get over to K98Talk.org. Get in that chat room. Join the conversation. Remember, stick around. The playoff game's at 1 o'clock or 105 today. So, oh, I just saw, I just saw on Drudge bop, 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 for the... For the Seahawks-Vikings game, for those of you who do not know this, so the Vikings play in Minnesota, where, according to Chris Rock, uh, there are two black people, Prince and Kirby Puckett. Um, <laughs> but they... <laughs> I absolutely love that joke. I, I, I always love it. <laughs> it's true. Usually you're talking about Wisconsin when you do that. It's you No, know, that's Ranch Priebus. You know, I, they run the orange scene. Never saw color fell to Barack Obama. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> but the Vikings, the, the 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 Vikings are having a new stadium built, and in the interim, they're playing in I think it's the University of Minnesota stadium, which is uh, let me just preemptively give myself this for the rest of the segment. <laughs> Um, which is outside of, uh, which is an outdoor stadium. Temperatures at game time, six degrees below zero. So what that means, while they're getting ready, after we get off the air here in about 15 minutes at noon, you stick around for that Bell River and that Dr. Randy Arrington for them office hours, baby. They actually have an office, and they go in there, Now I can't tell you what goes on in there. But Hey, know, now. Dr. A was a fighter pilot, so I, I think that office is... Hey, now. Let's have sex. Oh, come on. I heard about them. Fight. I've seen Top Gun. They make bets in bars about carnal knowledge on the premises. <laughs> it's a movie. You're starting rumors. I just, I can't. Uh, I'm starting no rumors. Daniel Stafford does have heads in the freezer when he does the radio. No, he does not. He is the nicest guy on internet radio, period, other than maybe our own Ricky Robinson. Mm, I'm doing two shows a week now. Stop mm. it. <laughs> He's going to hate you. Oh, I, I kid, I kid, I kid. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, I'm going to take this story. This actually, I think, is out today. You, you don't have this, so just, just, just play along, play along, play along. Okay. For those of you who have missed it, who have missed For it. What? For those of you who have missed it, do you know El Chapo? The drug dealer? Yes. The guy who escaped from the most maximum security prison of all Mexican security prisons in Mexico? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, God is actually giving us some beautiful... Oh, is this the be- Sean Penn thing? Oh, yeah. For those oh, my God. Of, for those of you who have a Sean Penn <laughs> autograph somewhere, if I were you, I would keep it handy. For this reason alone. <laughs> Pendejo! Here's what Sean Penn agreed. To, here's what Sean Penn agreed to do to party with El Chapo. Okay, so El Chapo is like one of the biggest cartel guys in the world. They put him in a Mexican prison. Oh, everybody's or a really happy. Poor lip gloss. Right, and then he goes uh, into the shower, and there was a tunnel and a thing and a machine, and 47 Egyptians died making the pyramids, and he escaped. So, jerk off the service Rex is gone. Now, somehow, somehow, I, I love New York Post. New York Post cover El Jerko. El Chapo meet El Jerko. Hollywood blowhard Sean Penn secretly met, interviewed, and posed for grip and smirk selfies with murderous drug lord Joaquin Guzman Loera, otherwise known as a Chapo man. Even as the world's most wanted fugitive continued to elude authorities in the months after tunneling out of a Mexican prison. Quote, I don't want to be portrayed as a nun, El Chapo says in the interview, in the interview, because suddenly Sean Penn is Walter Winchell. Nevertheless, to gain access to the Kingpin's uh, t- 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 secret jungle hideout, Penn agreed that Guzman would have final edit of the resulting story. Penn also agreed not to alert authorities to the killer's whereabouts. Still, Guzman's capture in a dramatic police shootout Friday came as a direct result of Mexican officials tracking their contacts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> terrific. No, El Chapo. Well, Sean didn't tell him. El Chapo. El Chapo. I, Sean Penn, I have Che Guevara t-shirts. I have driven through Mexican neighborhoods in L.A. Oh, my God. To get to Beverly Hills. I feel your pain, El Chapo. Oh, you know, Sean Penn, I love your movies, man. You know, you go interview with me. I don't want them to catch me. El Chapo, you have my word. Sean Penn meets with El Chapo and... (laughs) But it doesn't sound like Sean Penn told them they it tracked don't. their interwebs connections. It's not that Sean Penn told them. It's that Sean Penn is not really a spy. He just plays one in the movies. Okay? Oh, my God. Think about this. I guarantee, <laughs> You know how I bet you they tracked him to El Chapo? Because Sean Penn probably got in an SUV and drove from Beverly Hills to El Chapo meeting. No, what I did was I ran two red lights. 
how did they catch us? I mean, <laughs> let me ask you. A Why did you just do Sean Penn like you do I don't your know. friend Sean? Because I've, 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 never, I've never done Sean Penn. But here, here's the question. Here's the question. Who gets to play Sean Penn in six months about the movie of Sean Penn being dismembered and put in a crate? <laughs> hmm. I'm telling you, kids, I'm telling you, make sure you have those Sean Penn autographs. All right, VR porn is here, and it's scary oh. how realistic it is. All right, can I just tell you how giggity, 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 I was? Giggity, let's have sex. What? I, I was not even comfortable reading this article. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet because it sounded like sex with... You know I don't read the ones... You know what? Years. It's just going to come to a point at some... At some point in the next, oh, I don't know, 60 years, where you're never going to have to interact with a human being for anything. You're just going to sit in a room with a friggin' electronic box, and that's it. <laughs> that's Wait, it. What did you just, with the what? With your computer and some <laughs> goggles and this <laughs> and that and no. blah, 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 blah. No. You're never going to have to leave your house. You're you never going to have to actually speak to another human being at all for any reason. Do you know what you just said in a segment? You know about what? No, electric... I know, and you need you to stop. You said electric box. You need to stop right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, not only is Daniel Stafford going to hate you, I could get there. <laughs> I can't. Don't make me jib-jab you again, because that was hysterical. Oh, for those of you who don't have it, go put the jib-jab app, app on your phone. Please. Mm -hmm. Please. And, and, and go find pictures of people that you really don't like and just go put them on jib-jab. It is, oh, it's, I'm going to It is freaking hysterical. It is going to put, it's going to put psychologists and, and, and therapists uh, out of business. Yeah, so basically, for those of it's you. It's a very vengeful little app, uh, isn't it? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you considering virtual porn, JD's suggestion is get off your very real ass, get out to the very real bar, buy a very real drink to somebody with very real issues, and take them home like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like reading how enamored this freaking journalist is with his experience, and he actually put in there, um, and then it got really weird. You think? <laughs> I mean, hello. It didn't get weird until the plug got wet, baby. <laughs> I felt my face get flushed as they showed me their um skills. Things got really weird, and that's all I'm going to say. You're writing about virtual reality porn. And that's you what think it got, it's not weird? And that's when it got weird. Well, that's what. Let me let me tell you something. That sounds like a journalist that doesn't need a safe word. All right. I didn't know she was still alive, but Raymond Wong. But. Oh, my God. That's his name. Are you telling me that the guy... Raymond Wong wrote so, about virtual reality porn for so, Mashable. Yes. So, so Wong wrote about porn at home? Yeah. While he played with his electric box? Okay, terrific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear God. Lord. I swear to Christ, you know, you, you know why our writing staff is small? Because this writes itself. All right. I know. Uh, I cannot imagine how far past her knees they must sag at this point, but Madonna must still be alive. Madonna addresses, this is, that, 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 that. Oh, billboard. This is going to be good. Madonna addresses challenging times and teary speech during Mexico City concert. In the midst okay. of a custody okay. battle. Oh, I, I just, didn't know that. Hello. What? I have one question to ask. What? Isn't, like, her youngest kid, like, 20 or something? Well, that's what I, I was just getting into this. I didn't, in, in the midst of a custody battle over her son with ex-husband Guy Ritchie that doesn't seem to be ending time soon, Madonna took the stage da, 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 and delivered a candid speech. Da, 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 da. We you all go through challenges. custody battles over teenagers. They get to decide who they want to live with. Hold on. Anybody in the chat room know how old this kid is? Oh, he's got to be 15, 16 years old. Uh, all right. So let's take the let's take the the scariest the scariest show of the second. The scariest. You're so vain. You're fired. 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 
For those of you who have the razor blades sharpened but weren't uh, sure if you'd need them, I would draw a warm bath. This is from U.S. News, not The Onion. That Donald could win it all. So if Donald Trump proved the political universe wrong and won the Republican presidential nominee, would he be queen by Hillary Clinton? Da, da, da. A new survey of likely voters might at least raise momentary dyspepsia for Democrats since it suggests why it wouldn't be a cakewalk. Da, 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 da. Basically, here's the whole thing we were talking about. 20% of Democratic voters say they would vote for the Donald. I, <laughs> and that doesn't Black surprise right. me at all. He's a Democrat. Oh, my God. The whole world is completely... Completely, Toppy, completely freaking upside turkey. down. When is uh, the next debate? Well, I love him criticizing Bill Clinton's sexual escapades. Seriously? Oh, let's, 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 criticize, let's criticize the husband of the current Democratic frontrunner, and your wife is an ex-lesbian porn star, and she's number three. I told you my idea for the wall because of all the beautiful 20,000 Mexicans I've seen come through my wife's door. Fast this hour in conservative radio. Remember, guys, do not go anywhere. Stick around. Top of the noon hour, we got Bell River, Randy Aaron, that Dr. A for that office hours. Right now, we got to find Lionel. Lionel! Oh, you know what? The holidays are over, but I got him here. I got him here. No, I don't got him here. Lionel's on the other board. Up, oh, Lionel, hold on. Are you here? It's time to go home. Lionel! All right. Tell the nice people what you're going to be doing between now and Tuesday. Oh, what am I going to be doing between now and Tuesday? Probably finding myself a little bit of trouble. Ooh, I didn't know that was my new nickname. Where can they find mm. you on the social media? No, that ain't your nickname. I can't say that one on air. Where can they find you on the Twitters? At Scott's Fire. I'm on Game On JD, and I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to drink more coffee and see everybody Tuesday night. Thanks for listening, guys. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. Thank you for taking it easy with us. You can find our show account on Twitter at JD and Stacy. Or send us your interesting news story of the week to Game On War. That's W-A-A-R at gmail.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Scott's Fire and on Facebook at Stacy Lennox. And you can find me on the Twitters at Game On JD. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com.